All right, so out here today, it's really cold outside. So definitely a good time to spend uh, in here working on the old C10. I'm gonna just show you kind of where I'm at. I've been doing a lot of stuff off camera because just it'd be a ton of time lapse and you know, you guys have seen a lot of this on different channels. Uh, I did go ahead and uh, flop my wiring back on here, kind of plugged stuff in because I think that we are getting caught up on all of that. And up here, uh, I set this fender well in. I just put the one big bolt in it back here so that it would kind of hold it in place so we can see where this massive fuse block is gonna sit. And then also kind of get an idea of how much length we have here on our connectors for our ECM. Um, that stuff is just sitting here. I'll end up with a fender and the core support on before I do the final mounting. Just wanna get an idea of kind of, yeah, it's gonna work. It's kind of sits in here decent. I've been working on these fuel lines, trying to get them to sit and run nicely back in behind the motor. I'll show you the inside here in a minute, how we've connected them. So we're right in here with our fuel system and we've got to disconnect these uh, fittings here cause well, they were easy to cut off to pull the motor out apparently. And they left these connectors on. We've got a tool here that will snap over. And once this clips off, it'll slide back in and you can just pop that fuel line out of there. So slides in, wiggle it, jiggle it, it releases the clips and then this should just slide off the back. And you can see down in there the little plastic fingers that grab a hold of the shoulder on the line there. All right, so you can see these are the fuel lines. There's a pressure line and a return line coming out of the fuel rail on top of the engine. I have this one just loosely put together. I'm trying to keep them up as close as I can to the floor because unfortunately, since it comes off the back of the motor like that, we have exhaust that is gonna be down in here, occupying the same space. So I gotta keep those fuel lines up and away from the exhaust. They're gonna be up here close to this transmission and I know that's hot. So I'm probably gonna, after everything's connected, we know there's no leaks, I'll probably put some kind of insulation on those um, lines to, help keep them from heat soaking right there. So that's kind of what we'll do. Hey, kitty. So the shop line, she's uh, roaming around in here because it's really cold outside and... All right, so we looked at the fuel lines up top. This is kind of how I've got them situated to run. There's a recess in the floor right here. They'll end up clamped up and kind of up into that re re recess, yeah. I took just the factory lines that I pulled off of a like 97 Suburban and I rebent them. So they are not perfect, but they're nice hard steel lines. And you can see, got them running right back through this hole. Uh, I'll have them fastened tight over here because I put this in my cross member for my exhaust to run through. I just want to get enough room so I'm not going to overheat the fuel for the truck. As, as we keep going down with our fuel lines, you can see I've got the factory fuel filter there. I found those cool clips that uh, go on to the frame rail of one of those later model vehicles and they allow you to snap multiple sets of lines in there. I think I'm going to try to use those. They're better than some of the others that I've found. And you can see that fuel line, it just runs right on back down the frame. Then I uh, have the flexible parts of it that go across to a fuel pump module out of uh, one of the late model vehicles. But I don't think I've shown the underside of this. You can see this thing's all bedlined. It actually has a brand new floor in the bed. 
um, a lot of this stuff done before I started YouTube or anything. So this truck's been sitting, just waiting on the day that uh, we could spend all this time on it. All right. So, so yeah, this is uh, some of the fuel line stuff that I pulled out while I was at the salvage. I see a lot of guys utilize these plastic lines. They're quick connects. I mean, they're super simple. They must be okay because uh, they use them on so many different vehicles. Um, you know, I like the steel lines, so I've done a lot to try to be able to utilize them. And you can see the bends and everything. I mean, could you, could you replace that with brand new line? Sure you could. Could you order a kit for $200 that had all the AN fittings and the AN line to do it? Yeah, you could do that too. But um, it's not what I'm doing. We're gonna... All right, guys. So uh, last little piece, we were working on fuel lines, getting them all lined up. Now we're down here and uh, I've got this bracket on that the AC compressor goes into. I did put a couple of bolts in, just loose into the block to help line that bracket up, make sure we wouldn't have any problems when we put the compressor in there. Then you have to put this bolt and this bolt in prior to the compressor going in there. So they're in nice and tight. These are just there to line everything up. So we'll back them out so we can slip that compressor in to this bracket I do have my transmission lines kind of running underneath this. They're going to have to move around a little bit because they won't work where they're at right now. They are close to where they need to be. And then uh, you can see they're running back and pretty much right where they do on a stock vehicle. I needed to get them in so I can bolt this header on and kind of see what kind of interference we have there. A lot of stuff trying to occupy the same space. I did put my wiring onto my starter before and I had to take all that stuff loose because it was in the way of these transmission lines. So just kind of something you can learn from my mistakes. Wait till after you get your lines in before you put your wiring on there. So we have fuel lines done. We have our transmission lines done. We got to put the AC compressor on, then this header on, and yeah, we'll be moving right along with this thing. I also got my dipstick in and my for the engine and transmission. I drained the engine oil out of the engine. I can't believe I hadn't already done that, but I drained it, put a new filter on, put a few quarts in there just so it would have fresh oil laying in it. And yeah, we just keep moving along with this thing. All right, thought I'd just bring you guys in. Look at what's going on now. We're trying to fit this split loom around just a couple of these short little wire runs to give them some protection. You will notice that I didn't buy any split loom. I'm just using what was left off of various harnesses Seems like it's thicker than the stuff that uh, I would buy on Amazon. So, yeah, got that. Kind of getting it slid on here. Take a pair of scissors or a box knife, whatever is handy. You could even chew it off if you were tough, but I'm not tough. So I uh, set my core support in here, get an idea of where those trans lines are going to come out. Radiator is going to sit right here. The lines will have to come up and hook into either the cooler on the radiator or go under and in front for a external cooler. Haven't decided on that yet. 
I did get that compressor put in here. She is super tight, guys. Super tight. In hindsight, I probably should have heated this frame right here, folded it up a little bit more to give myself some room for that AC comp compressor line. Um, yeah, we're still out on that. Whether we're going to have to do that or not, may have to come in and do some clearancing. Otherwise, I'm going to have to drill into the side of that fitting and build a line that comes straight out. Either one's a possibility. I've got that header on here. Got a little interference with this plug wire here. The rest of them are super close, but they're not actually rubbing the trans lines. Yeah, we're still having issues back here with fitment, but we're pretty close on that stuff. I think uh, we're going to leave this in the mock-up stage right now. I don't... So... We got that uh, battery tray mounted in with the inner fender well and the fender on. You can see, um, probably save just enough room for the ECM to mount right in here beside the battery. I think uh, that'll all work, but we are going to have to fab us up some type of mount here. The factory stuff's just too big to go in there. So we're... So, uh, on rendition about 3.5 here with our bracket to hold the ECM in the truck. I started out with this nice factory piece that it has been broken, but then I broke it more. I cut it all apart. Oh, sorry about that. Got it down to this small piece, which I figured would be thin enough for it to fit in our space on our truck. Unfortunately, it's hard to bolt anything to. We, I mean, we could make it work, but it's still gonna be bulky and uh, not, not fit that great, so goodbye. Now, there's no bolt holes in this ECM. It's designed to slide and clip into stuff, so what I did was I fabricated me up something out of some light little sheet metal and then I also put a piece of angle iron with some nuts welded in it because I thought hey that's a great idea and I I got it all put together so it bolts into the factory bolt holes then when this is all done the ECM will be bolted to it and then the ECM will fit up kind of inside of this fender. It's hard to do with one hand, but hey, we can make it happen. So it will go up in here and see it just barely clears that fender liner or fender well. So we'll have it, we'll have it in there. I have test fitted it with the plugs and everything. Look at the size of that loom right there. And we're not using a lot of that wiring. It's just going to be left in there and kind of terminate off in this big old fuse block. And you saw from previous video, I mean, we eliminate most of the wires out of the connectors in there. One thing that we do have to do is we've got to mount this tack module. This is for the gas pedal to tell the throttle I don't know, the blade up there, how far to open by how much whoop pedal we give it. So that has to have a connector that goes into the throttle pedal assembly. Let's look at that one real quick. When we start dealing with electronics, we've got a ton of stuff to mess with. Here is the gas pedal for one of these drive-by-wire trucks. So this thing's got a mount up underneath the dash. We are going to have to fab some kind of a mount there to get that bad boy to sit in here. Not too tough. This is flat. There's a flat area up here. You can see where the factory pedal bolts in. 
Um, we're not going to be using that, of course, and we'll have to come up with a way to mount it. It has to come off the edge of this a little bit. Not too bad. Just have to do more figuring and fabrication. All right, guys, so we have made quite a bit of progress on the old truck. Um, lines hooked up, core support mocked up again. Now we're mocking up fenders on here, fender wells, figuring out what kind of mounts we've got to have to make all this stuff fit into the space we've got. Um, we just keep moving forward with those things a few at a time. So that's kind of the stuff in the engine bay that we've got to figure out. Then I pulled out an old, uh, this is a fuel tank that I built um, to fit inside of the frame rails on this truck. Uh, I've built a few before. It's not super hard, but the thing is uh, you don't want fuel leaks. So um, I welded this thing 100% inside and outside, but it still uh, doesn't have sending unit or any of that stuff. We've got to figure that out. I'm definitely leaning towards an in-tank pump. I looked on the Tanks Inc. website and kind of looked at their products that they offer out there. We're going to try to put this together and not spend quite as much money on that fuel sending unit. Um, we'll make an entire module out of it. So we have the sending unit, the fuel pump, the pressure line coming out, and the return line coming out all in one piece. Then we have to put a fuel filler in it so we can fill the darn thing up with gas. Um, I did cut out some pieces to make baffles out of whenever I did this tank. And we just got to kind of connect it all up and make it happen. So we've got that going for another video. Not, I think it's about time to cut this one off. We've made quite a bit of progress and I like to keep them within 15, 20 minutes long. So, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoy the comment or the content, give it a thumbs up and we'll catch you on the next one.